it's Lee from ColoringQueen.net and today I want to show you a new colouring book artist. Her first colouring book is called Beethoven Saizuna, which basically translates to Enchanted Seasons and my apologies in advance if I have not pronounced that correctly. The artist is Natalia Van Moor and she is Polish by birth but moved to Belgium when she was about 12 and has lived there ever since. So maybe we call her Polish Flemish, I don't know. As you can see, it has a really glossy black cover on it. And on the back, we have a message from the artist and gorgeous colored butterflies. And these feel like decals that are on the back here with this lovely lilac printing. To start off the book, we have black protective paper. And now we get into the gorgeous images. So they're very whimsical and they actually remind me a lot of Hannah Carlson's artwork in some ways. Be interested to hear what you think. But in this first coloring book, Natalia is going to go on a magical journey and you can see how whimsical it is as we go along. So we've got that nameplate page which is a bigger image than most nameplate pages that we have and the paper is super thick. It is a medium to heavy paper with a very slight texture making it great for coloured pencils and the images are really large to fit this A4 type format. It's so lots of large open elements. I could imagine doing this with maybe pan pastels or something like that. And lovely little message for Valentine's Day there in English. The images are very, very cute and whimsical. So this picture reminds me a lot of something that Hannah Carlson type does you know with the beautiful woman and the flowers and the beautiful insect gems but then we have something completely different on the facing page now look at this gorgeous bunny rabbit with his easter eggs and then we've got the aladdin's lamp and lots of line art space there for you to work out what it is that you want to do and how you want to color it so there's a little bit of texture here, but it's mostly line art and you work out what it is, how you want to do your light source, etc. Isn't this gorgeous? Beautiful images. Now, they are a little bit close to the spine, but that spine will loosen up as you go through it. And look at these. And then we've got this gorgeous little like dollhouse and these melting mushrooms. I think it's the first time I've seen melting mushrooms in a colouring book. I could be wrong. We've got like a bee house and then these individual ones, giant ladybirds. So if your eyesight is poor or if you suffer from a motor type disease or injury, then these larger open elements might be really great for you because they're not as tiny as we see in some coloring books. Then we've got these gorgeous, beautiful fish and then the bees are making a stack of pancakes. Beautiful shoes, beautiful melting candles in the teapot. Very interesting pictures and very imaginative. I think, uh, Natalia is inspired a lot by fairy tales, she says, and also by Harry Potter. So look at these, aren't they gorgeous? They've got like little faces on them, like little skulls, so very cute. And so she wanted to give her book, a, you know, a touch of magic, and I think she's achieved that. And it's her very first colouring book, so... I think she has done really well. She also works as an artist and paints. So this is gorgeous. I love how the tree is in front. And then we go to something really whimsical, a little mushroom house with a very ornate door on it there. 
And there we have a very realistic girl waiting to hang the Christmas stars on the tree. Beautiful cuckoo clock and pine cones, some holly there. A pretty good one for Christmas, a low key Christmas. If you're looking for something to colour, we've got our perfume bottles and our little children playing. All the little butterflies or bats are coming out of her book. And then we've got our gorgeous little mouse having a little snack and our beautiful fairy over there. So yeah, a real mixture of pictures and different styles, different animals. Some of the images are a little bit close to the spine, but as I said, once you push this down a bit, it'll fold down and you'll be able to get in there and color it. She's having a look in the mirror. And then we've got a nice one for a creepy one, a Halloween crystal skull with some sugar and pyramids. <laughs> so it's very different. I love this one. She's going, it's like she's um, the line, the witch in the wardrobe and she's going into Narnia. So I love that. I love all these droopy candles. Then we've got our gorgeous little stone house. Great one for Halloween. We've got bats. We've got pumpkins. Very, very cute. A little witch in the background. Something for Santa here. Beautiful Christmas baubles. Lots of nice ones for Christmas. I'll have to remember that. Then we've got all our little bedtime stories and Christmas tales and our beautiful palace aren't these gorgeous we've got our creepy clown over there very creepy and there's santa with his sack and then we've got some beautiful more christmas day and our beautiful she looks like a snow queen i'm gonna say snow queen we've got ice skating and here she is on the cracked ice and here's our little bunny going up to the steps. He's going to get a present too, I think. And our beautiful Christmas tree there in the background with all the lights. Absolutely gorgeous. So it takes us through the whole year in a little magical format where we end up at Christmas with some gorgeous images there to colour. So let's test out some mediums. Uh, I've already done some circles here and I'm just going to use two layers of colour on each circle. So starting off with Prismacolor, it's going down really well and I feel like we could put a lot of layers on this particular paper with the Prismacolors. So if you like layering and building up a lot of colour, then the Prismacolor works really well on this paper. So here it is just with two layers, it's going on soft and creamy and yeah very nice, getting a lot of pigment out of it and it feels really great on the paper and surprising because the paper actually feels quite smooth to the touch but it clearly has more tooth in it than first appearances. Now the polychromos are going on really easily and if you're a one and done type of person you could probably push a bit harder than I was pushing and you could probably finish in <laughs> just one layer with the polychromos. They're going on very well but it, they are accepting you know, more layers as well on the paper and it's holding it so that's good as well. So suitable for both well and done and adding layers. So testing out the Black Widows, now yeah, they're going well on the paper but there is actually a lot of white tooth still coming through, just even on the one, so to me the Black Widows could go on multiple times or you could push harder on the paper. I'm just going on this second layer, I feel like that I could easily do another two layers with the Black Widows quite easily just by doing a light layer but uh, if I pushed a bit harder first up then I might not need to do that. It's 
So they seem to, the paper seems to be a, a lot more toothier than what it feels like. And so if you do like layers, uh, it seems really good. But if you just push a bit harder than what I was pushing, then you could be one and done as well, especially with the polychromos. Now the surprise for me is the Crayolas. I mean, usually they're just cheap and cheerful, but they are going on so well on this paper, I'm actually surprised. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to have more pigment or more colour. They are what they are, but I'm really surprised with how well they went on and how creamy they felt on the paper. So it could just be that colour, but very impressed. Now the whole one is going on very nice and creamy. To be honest though, I still think that the Prismacolor or the Polychromo is better, but it is going on lovely and creamy, and if you're a Holborn fan, then uh, you're going to have a great time with this book. But if you don't have them and you've got Crayolas, mine went on really, really well. So high end up against cheap. They're both great results. Now the Copic is needs refilling that one <laughs> so I better change to another one so the Copic is an alcohol based marker and this is not alcohol based paper but I always like to prove a point that you can't use it and it has gone through on the other side so the Intense pencils they're activated with water so I know many people love using watercolors but these are double sided images so remember uh, peeling of the paper may occur if you use a lot of water or you use multiple layers. It is going on very easily there. I haven't swapped on too much water, but it is going on very well and it hasn't peeled the paper at all. Now the Tombow markers, um, usually I can move them around a bit and blend them out with a bit of water, but I don't know whether it was the colour I chose or the actual paper, but they're not really moving on this paper at all. So my pick of these products in the second line would have to be the Intense pencils or, or a water-based pencil. The Tombow markers, unless it was that particular colour, they're just not giving me the movement that they usually are. And it has actually ghosted through to the other side. You can see it there as has the Copic and the Intense was the only one that didn't come through on the other side. So I hope that was helpful for you. And that's it from me. Until next time, stay safe and happy colouring.